on March 19th this year, Matthew Patrick, aka Matt Pat, bade goodbye to his on-screen YouTube career with his final theory ever as presenter of the Theorist's channels. In it, he celebrated the work of Hungarian-American mathematician and physicist John von Neumann in his, and his fabled game theory. Yes, it was a 50s concept way before it was a YouTube show. And to Matt Pat's credit, as the genius that he is, he definitely thought about tackling it. Now, in a nutshell, game theory stressed the importance of cooperation, conviction, forgiveness, and honesty in gaining trust. And it ranges from day-to-day -day life to geopolitical issues and everything in between. If you're interested in how MatPat explained it, uh, you can actually check his final theory video. I may check. I may put it out there uh, at the top or in the video description if you're watching this on YouTube. And perhaps watch all six endings because, yes, he left us all with one final lore. But... You may wonder, why am I connecting game theory with a cycling scene in the Philippines as you see in the thumbnail or in the title of this video? Because if you've been living under a rock right now, it's as worse as Matt Pat's chaos ending. I post brought the end here. I just wanted to uh, share a little bit more about the video that I am editing, re editing right now. And... Um, I forgot to mention that Veritasium also uh, created a video a few months before MatPat even announced his uh, exit on uh, as, as presenter of the Theorist's channels about game theory. So uh, MatPat admitted on his final theory video that he based his uh, research on uh, Derek's uh, video about game theory. So that's collaboration. <laughs> in its you know, at its best so that's that i may also uh share to you uh a mad pat exit aftermath video uh wherein i theorize on mad pat himself not the theories that he um he's doing so let's just say this is uh this is more of a closure for my for me uh, now that MatPat is retired, so that's that. And also, I just wanted to uh, update you that uh, he did uh, came back on style theory for creators in fashion. So I'm also uh, linking that uh, fashion show in the description below, just in case you wanna you wanna watch it after this. So that's all I wanted to say. And let's go back to the video. Hi, I'm Ian Rignon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, and welcome to another episode of The Intrepid Show. Normally, I do not want to delve deep into the politics of cycling in the Philippines, given how much priority and, quite frankly, privilege cars have, and given how politicized and polarized our archipelago, archipelago already is in a lot of things. But then again, I am just wondering how we can put our differences aside, and how the different kinds of cyclists coexist with each other and inevitably with motor vehicles of all kinds. If you wonder why am I looking this way uh, and not through the uh, lens of the camera, it's because I have a script for this. I would develop this as well as a, as a Substack article. Yes, I already have a Substack. I'll also link it in the description below. That should be intrepidianrenyon at uh, dot substack dot com, uh, without the N on my fa on my uh, family name. So that's uh, basically uh, my substack link. You can check it out after this video, or you can also read it out. And uh, before we go on with this um, with this video, I would ho I hope that you would um, subscribe to my YouTube channel intrepidianrenyon. Ring the notification bell as well. So that you can have uh, an idea, or you can have, uh, you're, you'll be uh, aware, or you'll be notified with um, some of my videos uh, once they come out. And um, quite honestly, medyo um, lilo ako this year because I have a lot of uh, stuff to do that's very, very important. So uh, these uh, these days, uh, it's very rare that I um, record these kind of videos, but. 
at the very least, I'm still here. <laughs> this is a proof of life. And before we go on, I would like to give a huge shout out to Sean Bike. Sean Santa Maria yata ang pangalan niya, but uh, I'll I'll link his video in the description below because uh, even though I have uh, independently uh, developed the script for this video, somehow this guy uh, helped uh, the this guy's video helped helped me out with um, uh, developing it or um, Polish. Uh, Polishing, polishing. What is that? Polish, polish. What the hell? <laughs> Basically, polishing the whole damn thing. So, uh, shout out to you, sir, uh, Sean, and uh, I hope you would ride safe as well. Damn, Jane, boy, there are a lot of cyclists. And uh, patience, na po. Some cyclists are like that. Now, for this video, I would be dividing the topics into at least seven, several. D7, several main points of discussion. Cycling as competition and recreation. Mountain and gravel enjoyers uh, doing their thing. Bike commuting and active transport. Bike safety and advocacy. Gatekeeping. And the problem uh, newbie cyclists face with all, all these shit going on in the cycling community here in the Philippines. Let's start off with, let's just say, uh, default. Uh, kind of cyclist and these are the roadies the idiots and the simps let's face it many of the younger cyclists most of them road cyclists or um cyclists who use mountain bikes as uh as road bikes wanted to go on two wheels because they wanted to race and they wanted to be picked for their talent the most basic thing they do is to to go on cycling friendly locations or at least on wide enough roads where they could test their metal. In Metro Manila and its surroundings, you have Neapolitan in the north, Sumulong and Timberland in the in the east, and C6, Daang Reina, C5, C6, Daang Reina, Daang Hari, and Vermosa in the south. Beyond the metropolis, anything goes, but anything near the center of Manila is very much a hellhole. For training and uh, for training and exercise, unless you're a bike commuter, and we'll deal with bike commuters later in this video. There will be competitions in these relatively empty areas, and and which are sometimes called bente bente in Pinoy ciclista lingo, since the fee for some of these competitions normally cost twenty Philippine pesos or. 35 US cents because some of these races are held on a weekly basis and most of the time they are unofficial ones since those that garnered some kind of media or social media attention cost a lot more which cyclists who are still of student age can never afford. And don't even get me started with the basketball centric sports bureaucracy we have here in the Philippines because it's all bullshit. <laughs> Now, what makes it worse is all of the corporate bullshit the community is exposed to, especially private companies investing on cycling teams, making the whole experience focused on road bike racing like the famous Tour de France or Giro d'Italia. Those who don't make the cut, and there are many, do more unorthodox ways to be famous while either becoming an idiot who values speed and aerodynamics more than their very lives, and at and at the expense of other road users, mind you, or a simp who has been fascinated by the very few female cyclists in the community and would do creepy sh** from catcalling to outright harassment. Even the new pros seem to struggle leaving their problematic humor behind. This is the reason why, as far as I see it, the lines are blurred when it comes to cycling to compete, cycling to train, and cycling to have fun. There are even race-oriented cyclists who are a bit apprehensive when they see a commuter or a mountain or gravel cyclist packing a lot of gear because they think it would affect their performance in aerodynamics. And you know, it's not something mountain or gravel cyclists really care about. Because for them, cyclists' comfort rather and performance are kings and everything else is secondary. Mountain cyclists focus more on their mental and motor skills on how to shred mountains and not die in the process while gravel guys and girls prioritize how to be safe riding on dirt roads given their unpredictability. Something that is common with MTB and gravel riders is that they want to try challenging themselves on rougher roads while also becoming competitive on paved or semi-paved ones. 
and I definitely commend them for that. As someone who has a mountain bike uh, frame fitted with gravel parts in a hybrid, I was more of making sure that, that I'm comfortable and safe with my ride than care about aerodynamics last because screw aerodynamics. While trail or mountain riding is not my thing and I w I'm not really closing the door on that, why not? M maybe I can try uh, some of the basics. I, I mean, hindi naman ako, ano, uh, hindi naman ako sarado sa ganyan. I, I'm open to that kind of thing. I definitely needed to have shock forks and a sturdy setup since road and bike lane con conditions here in the Philippines vary so much. I also firmly believe in the saying that better have it and not need it than need it and not have it. This is also a mantra bike commuters follow, not just with the bike specs but also the tools needed to make minor repairs and patches. Because I myself ride an MTB gravel hybrid as a bike commuter. Bike commuters don't give a damn about aerodynamics or athletic performance as most of them see the bike as a tool, a vehicle capable of bringing its rider from point A to point B. And it doesn't matter if you use a road bike, a mountain bike, a gravel bike, a pedal assist e-bike, a folding bike, or any combination or a combination of any of them for that matter, as long as you see your bike as a transport or tool or transport assistant in case of folding bikes that can be carried on trains and buses as long as you see that bike see the bike as a tool and not as a lifestyle not really lifestyle but but as um, an extension of yourself you're a bike commuter now having said that this means that they would have to bear the brunt of riding along cars motorcycles and even electric vehicles like the e-trike but most of the time, bike commuters are in a damn if you do, damn if you don't situation when motorists call them out and tell them to either stay in their lanes or ride on sidewalks instead of, instead or deal with bike lanes that are not connected and at times dangerous due to bureaucracy and cutting corners as an afterthought just for requirements. And don't even get me started with vehicular cycling. It doesn't fucking work here. I already tried that most most of the time every time i ride my bike but i just can't fucking keep up okay <laughs> uh i can't keep up with uh with uh with cars i can't think I, like a like a car driver because i am busy doing my cadence looking left and right uh to see the if there are cars that w might might side swipe me or something vehicular cycling doesn't work here don't get me started with that that is why as a bike commuter i need those shock forks which brings us to the so topic of safety and advocacy let's face it many younger cyclists are reckless brainless and in the case of fixie cyclists Brakeless. It seems that because they are young, they don't need safety gear like helmets, brakes, or even extra money because they claim it adds extra weight. And without this extra weight, they are nimble. And because they are nimble, they can outrun anything only to realize that speed is not everything. And in the worst case scenario, they are demoted to ground meat. Giniling in Tagalog. And that's where bike safety advocates come in. Now, these kinds of people are a very very mix mixed bunch because there are those who seek to just ride peacefully without getting re near missed by cars or motorcycles get hit by them get out of balance uh because of them and unfortunately yeah sometimes get pointed by some of them with a gun and potentially get getting shot on the other hand there's a noisy bunch of advocates who lean towards the woke side of advocacy that everything that is considered good or beneficial for cyclists are emphasized by these folks as their legal rights and that those riding cars are even people who tolerate their existence as their greatest enemies. At one time, one of them even put himself on the bike lane to tell motorists to clear it even if he was not enforced to do so. Because of this, bike advocates in general have been perceived, rightly or wrongly, as entitled pricks and as a consequence motorists think cyclists do not belong on the road because they don't fucking pay road you 
Who's his thoughts? Unlike us. That's their words, not mine. Marami kang mababasang comment na mga sweeping statements from motorists. Sinasabi, ang daming privilege, mga entitled na siklista na akala mo kung sino ang yayabang. And they go on to say, maraming comment na ganito. Ito effect na wala kayong karapatan sa kalsada, saka lang kayo magyabang kapag nagpaparehistro na rin kayo taon-taon. Katulad naming mga motorista. Something like that, mapa motorman o mapa four wheels. And I tell you, that's the stupidest thing I've ever read. Downright stupidity, man. Parehistro mo bisikleta mo sa akin, magigla mo. Go figure. Such woke attitudes and the rise of idiots and simps in the cycling community unfortunately meant that some cycling advocates and well-meaning people close to them uh, close themselves from any interaction from with fellow cyclists who think are woke, weak, or worthless, and sometimes out of prejudice. There are also anti-woke folks who seem to have gone too unhinged, and that they seem that. Uh, that they seem to have swallowed the red pill, hook, line, and fucking sinker. There are those kind of people. There are still also old timers who for one reason or another just hate the newer generation of cyclists just because the youngsters couldn't do what they have done. For example, without naming names, there is this person that some famous cycling creators interacted with who to this, to his credit, uh, pioneered long-distance bike touring across the Philippines before the age of the internet. One time, the guy ranted on a significantly younger fema female cycling creator who bike packs the Philippines just like him. And he said that she stole, stole his ideas. And frankly, such antics and attitudes were quite un ungentlemanly for my standards. Even so, for my good friends uh, AJ Perez and Jay Aruga, both of them already have a, a show called The Sentinel. I would uh, link the Facebook page for The Sentinel. I am not sure if they also have a YouTube uh, YouTube um, profile or YouTube uh, channel. If ever they have, I will link it in the description as well. But their show is, primar is primarily on Facebook. Uh, for all I know, it's every Saturday, 9 p.m. Philippine Standard Time. So that's um, uh, one, 1 in the afternoon UTC. So yeah, uh, that's 1300 UTC, I think. Yeah, that's uh, that's the time there. Uh, so yeah, do check out um, AJ and J for their... Uh, <laughs> AJ and J, what the hell? Um, for their show called The Sentinel, I would definitely recommend you guys um, uh, watch that if you don't want to be that kind of uh, that kind of uh, uh, red pill guy, even though you're against the wokes. If that's your thing, yun lang yung masasabi ko dun. Anyway, the last laugh in this discussion was on the lady because. She just bikepacked uh, herself to the Mount Everest base camp and has since gone on a bike uh, to Sri Lanka and Korea. So quite honestly, it's really um, it's really uh, the best revenge for this girl. So uh, shout out to you, ma'am, and uh, I hope you have a safe ride uh, out there. But going back to the old man, let me say this to be charitable to him. I do understand where this guy is coming from. Because prior to my cycling adventures, I was involved with the propagation of the Catholic faith online and in the university that I attended. I admit that I became bitter because I was the one, I was rather one of those who planted the tree but someone else ate the fruit. Ako ang nagtanim, iba ang kumain. That kind of thing. But since the guy also visits churches just like what I do during long rides or warm-up ones for the old purists his age, and perhaps due to the benign and collaborative attitude of my peers in the online ministry I was involved with, let me say this. I eventually realized that what I have done contributed to something larger than myself. And you know what? I'm largely at peace with that because 
if I if I really uh if I really have a grudge on that, it's just gonna be freaking heavy, okay? So that's that. And it's such a shame that he can't realize this guy that I'm talking about. He can't realize that same thought in the cycling community just because he single-handedly pioneered long-distance bike rides. And he wasn't credited for it since he was ahead of his time. And everything pre predating the internet is considered lost. I do hope that the guy would at least appreciate the thing he pioneered without boasting about it. Finally, there are people who are just new at the hobby or aspire to use cycling as part of one's workout, adventure, commute, or sustainable commitment, or just enjoy being on two wheels as it clears the mind from all the bullshit that plagues humdrum everyday life and do not want to be involved in the fucking drama, although he is con concerned as to why cyclists are at each other's fucking throats. These people, or these are the type of people, rather, who have the most seldom rides or riding times in terms of frequency because they just have something else to do. They are concerned if they could still arrive at their destination in one piece during the very few free times they have to hit the saddle. Sadly, these are the people who easily get discouraged about cycling, not only because of the current transportation environment, but also because of the infighting in the cycling community. Let's just say these people are just screaming in, in their brains, I just wanna fucking ride my bike! So, what now? You know, when I wrote this script that I am reading right now, I suddenly realized that what I just said, or written in this case, in response to a certain legend, act is actually a fruit of the von Neumann-Patrick concept of game theory. Yeah, I'm also crediting MatPat in the development of the concept, concept as he and his community of theorists were instrumental in the importance of having fun and learning at the same time. Game theory stipulates that players must cooperate with each other to one, have a good time, two, be firm and call out any deviations to the rules, three, give chance to erring players, and four, be honest in playing. Only then can trust come naturally. And when trust comes naturally and not as a result of uneasy compromise, only then would a community grow. Besides, we can't play that philosophical game forever. You know, we are finite, okay? We are finite beings. And speaking of that document from the Vatican, yeah, we do not have infinite dignity, okay? Uh... I'll leave it to the theologians. We can't play that philosophical game forever. And we should eventually realize when our time is up. Just like what MatPad realized on January 9th, 2024, when he first announced to his intention to retire as presenter to all four major theorist shows. Game theory, film theory, food theory, and style theory. I don't love the fact that Steph and I have been work first for over a decade where I'm sitting down at dinner with my best friend and we're talking about business logistics or we're talking about animatronic toes. I miss the days where I could just sit down on the couch with her and play video games and it's not for content or I'm playing a game and I'm not thinking about what theories are gonna come out of that. I miss it. My life has changed in the last 13 years. I, I mentioned Dolly before. He's the coolest little dude, and he's getting older by the minute. And I watch him, and he is so much fun, and he is so much smarter than I was when I was his age. He also probably knows the FNAF lore better than I do, which is a problem that I should probably address at some point. But honestly, I want to be able to spend more time with him. So far, if you hear this, Mr. Patrick, Tom, Lee, Santi, and Amy are holding on their own. So. The ship is safe with these four. And you know, we still see MacPat uh, or his hand on all of the new theories these four hosts present. Since, surprise, surprise, he is the big boss of theorist media with his wife Stephanie as his business partner, second in command, and best friend, and amazing mother to their son Ollie to boot. 
talk about relationship goals, guys. Hands down. But you know, I just hope that Matt and Steph would soon decide to have a permanent play buddy for Ollie. So let's apply game theory to the cycling scene in the Philippines. So you have the roadie, the shredder, the gravel guy, the commuter, the advocate, the legend, and the normie. The last guy I didn't talk about, um, I didn't talk about, it's the um, the normie, the guys who just say, I just want to ride my bike. The legends are the ones who are gatekeeping. That's that. And of course, the sinners in the cycling community, the idiots and simps, that is, cannot break bread with the players unless they become one of them and enrich their minds and leave their lewd memes at the door. Until then, they are gem boys by default. Because this is a game of Gempoy. Gempoy in Pinoy Ciclista Lingo is the term used in the cycling community to call out bad actors, such as those who have no safety gears or features, uh, features on themselves or in their bikes. The single rule is that there are practices in cycling that would be shown in to the players, and if it is fine, they would call it out as safe, and if not, Gempoy. Now, given the profiles I have provided earlier, most often than not, the legend calls gem and calls everything gempoy out of spite. The advocate calls bad cycling practices safe even at the detriment of cars, motorcycles, motorcycles rather, or fellow cyclists. And the roadie always stress the concept of getting a good aero, speed, and momentum in every ride. Everyone else would have to call them out and ask why and perhaps convince them to play honestly because What's at stake here is the safety of everyone pedaling on two wheels and the general perception of those who see cycling as a nuisance to the roads. Let's say the legend, the advocate, and the roadie stuck to their guns. That would only mean all cyclists would lose their legitimacy on the roads, car drivers, motorcycle riders, and e-trike users would, have, would be able to have a field day every single day and more fatalities are to be expected. In short, everyone loses the game. What's the matter, Count Reach? How did this even happen? <laughs> okay. But let's say the legend loosened up and played fairly. The advocate reconsidered his answers, and the roadie understood that not all cyclists need to go fast and aero. The immediate result is that everyone would learn from each other's perspective, consider the best practices, and be content, committed rather, not to do the bad ones, nor condone or tolerate those who do so. Perhaps at the end of the game, it would influence those who may be considering riding a bicycle to work or to any relatively near destination instead of driving a car. Perhaps people are fed up with, the, with dealing with the traffic on the daily commute so they clamor for the public sector to do something about it. Perhaps anyone in the public sector would notice such a trend and legitimately suggest improving bike infrastructures and public transport to provide people multiple options of navigating a city or other locations instead of a single one that requires a lot of fuel and patience. Perhaps if everyone cooperated in the game of Gempoy, Everyone would benefit, trust each other, and would consider not being an asshole to anyone online and on the road. In those circumstances alone, would it be considered a win? Only then would all of us realize how we made our indelible mark in the cycling community and how we would be content with all of that until we hopefully climb the holy mountain and never come down again. Remember. It's just a theory. A game theory. Thank you. Thank you for watching. But hey, let me tell you that this episode is over. Kala nyo ah. <laughs> Kala nyo ah. Gagawa ako ng ano ah. Gagawa ako ng spoof na ano ah. Closing spiel ah. Kala nyo. <laughs> anyway, with all that said, this is Intepe Ian Rinyon reminding you to at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, be kind to yourself and to each other. If you're a cyclist, wear a helmet. That's my helmet right there at the background. And remember, that's just a show. An intrepid show. 
<laughs> gotcha! And as always, thank you for watching. From here in Intrepid HQ, ride safe, and see you next time. Ian out. Ang init talaga, grabe. Woof. Ang init, grabe. They're all... <laughs> yeah, boy! Ginawan ko talaga ng ano, but hey, that's just a theory. Pero instead of theory show. <laughs> Nailed it! Hi, it's Ian after the recording. I just wanted to let you uh, know that I'm here in Vermosa to do this thing. And uh, just I'm just... Uh, reminding you to subscribe to my YouTube channel in Trapedi and Reunion. Ring the notification bell if you like this video. Uh, like it and share it around. And uh, I guess I know. I just wanted to uh, tell you that uh, I have ridden here with uh, my helmet on. Tinanggal ko lang kasi sobrang init talaga. But uh, those and uh, one more thing before I end the vid, end this video. Kung sino man yung nagsasabi na ano na dapat lisensyahan yung bike. Sige. Lisensya ng bike pero maging disiplinado din kayo. Para fair. Get out.